Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. For the community, by the community. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Happy December. Can you believe it? December already? So, uh, we're filming, we, we film a little in advance, but, um, Right now, as we speak, the election's over. Uh, I think a lot of the shock. I think people are starting to to feel their their senses again from the <laughs> from the shock. <laughs> but um, and we're going into the holiday season, which is happy. We've got New Year, but there's something we all really need right now, and that is to laugh and escape through the arts. And right now, I think it's 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 imperative. So I'm really excited. I'm having the Little Theater of Manchester on now, and they are only, what, about 20 minutes from here in no, Manchester. Not, no. yeah. And I, I did a play there many moons ago, but it's a wonderful theater. I'm very excited to have him back on with the new executive director and artistic director. So we have Dwayne Harris. Hey, Dwayne. Hi. Yeah! <laughs> Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. I don't clap for him. <laughs> and Michael Forjada. Thank Yay. you. Thank you. Who's our artistic director. So now, um, aren't you announcing your new season around now? We are, yes, right around now. Okay, wait, wait, here. Wait. New season, Little Theater Manchester. <laughs> Camera's rolling. Okay. <laughs> so um, we will. So I, let me start off by saying we just finished our, our 2016 season with our production of Oklahoma. Uh, it was a beautiful, uh, beautiful production, one we were very, uh, very proud of. Which, but it's great because it gives us a great springboard right into the 2017 uh, season. Um, so I'm just going to uh, blow through them quickly um, okay. and happy to, to talk more about each one of them. Um, in February, we have Calendar Girls. In um, uh, April. April, thank you, we have Godspell. In June, we have uh, Sons of the Prophet. In um, August, we have The 39 Steps. And we finished the season. Our big musical for this year is The Addams Family. Fun. Oh, yeah. what a great season. Yeah. Yeah. And now, and how long have you been at the helm? So I've been there just about 18 months. So about a year and a half. Oh, it's still, I, I didn't know you, you were that new because you're, yeah. you're, you're so natural in your position. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Feels like he's been doing it for years. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I very, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, so, and when you, when you choose the season, do you, does the board sit down and you just go through things? Do you ever survey the audience? Or? Uh, well, uh, so yeah, so I'll let Michael speak to the, okay. to the process for, for coming up with it, but absolutely. We, we ask, um, after every show, we do a quick survey just to get people's feedback on the production just saw and around this time we start adding a question what would you like to see in coming in coming years because right. absolutely their input is, is critical into knowing what right, you know what right, they want right. to see we know what we want to produce um, we it's not easy for us to always know what they want to see so that input is, is critical uh, to helping us guide the, oh, yeah. the season you, decision you need your input exactly sure. exactly you know and when you put what do you want to see what what do you do like say you've got tons and tons that's when they write down I want to see a blonde middle-aged woman who hosts a TV show. <laughs> yeah, well, surprisingly, we get that all the time. Oh, yeah. yes. Right in. <laughs> Very specific. Yes. yes. <laughs> so, so Michael, you are directing Godspell. Have you I am. have you directed other plays there? Yeah, actually, I've been with LTM for 25 years. Yeah. I haven't met you before. No, I, I I took a little bit of a break. And I was president for a number of years back in the late 90s, early 2000s. And then I took a little bit of a break and came back for about four or five years. And then I left for Maryland. And I lived in Maryland for three years. So I think 
When you came to us, did you do the vagina monologue? Yes. The first with, with, version with, with Deb and Gretchen. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I was in Maryland at that time. Oh. So I was. That was one of the one of right. the times when I moved. Uh, and I came back three years ago. And LTM is, is a family, and so when you come back, it's like come home. Right. Come, come on home. So I came home and just got wrapped right back up into it again. Yeah. And I started this past season. The 2016 season was my first year as artistic director and I didn't have a hand in choosing the season that was already chosen when I came on board in 2016. Uh, the interesting thing about Oklahoma is when we've done surveys in the past uh, we would say what what musicals would you like to see and inevitably Oklahoma would come up you know Oklahoma yeah. would be on there and everybody would go Oh God, not Oklahoma. Not yeah. Not it's like sound Oklahoma. and music, you're like, oh, never, right. Right. well, we did sound and music. I directed sound and music, oh. but anyway, um, and it was great. But it, see, but that's what happens. Okay. No, 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 but that's what happens. People sit there and they go, oh God, would we really? Yeah. It's well, we finally did Oklahoma, uh -huh. and it was a massive success. Because that that's what people love to see. Well, people, people want to feel good, right. especially exactly. now. Exactly. Hello, all the exactly. negativity. Exactly. <gasps> so they yeah. came to be entertained, and that's mm -hmm. what they got. But in choosing the 2017 season, our process is standardly, we, we form a committee. And as artistic director, it's my job to create a charge that kind of outlines what they should be looking for. And it... And you know, what What should you be going for when you're reading plays? What What types of plays should you be looking at? Right. And one thing that I gave them for 2017 was I put a little kind of caveat around it. Can't be anything that LTM has done in 30 years. Because what, what I started noticing when I started writing the charge was there, we started repeating shows and repeating shows and repeating shows. Noises off, we've done three times. Right. Vagina monologues, we've done three times. We started. I started noticing repeats, and it's like, okay, there's a lot of plays out there that we can be looking at. Let's not repeat anything. So nothing in the last three years. And then I said it had to have been done in New York in the last 25 years. Right. So that therefore we were trying to go for something a little newer. But there's been a lot of revivals, and that was the frightening thing. When you then go to look, it's scary when you start to look at what ha what's happening in New York. With the re yeah, like it's a I lot saw of revivals. The West Side Story yes, revival, yes, which was a lot different. Oh, too. absolutely. But very good. Yeah. But the committee came in with a great slate of plays. We choose five plays, and then they have to choose a couple of alternates in case we can't get the rights to them. And we did in this season when we came up with the season, my. When I looked at the charge and I looked at what they came up with, mm -hmm. I didn't necessarily see something that I was hoping for, which was something that would help um, our standard cast members, which happens to be a lot of women. We have a lot of women that are involved. And the season that was chosen was very male heavy. And with community theater today, it's very difficult to cast men. It is. There's not a lot of men out there. And especially when you're talking musicals and stuff, when you get those triple threats, right. the guys that can sing, dance, and act, it's very difficult. They're there, but they're just not in the same proliferation as there are for women. So I actually had them go back. I, I hated doing it, but I said, you know, I'm looking at this piece of the charge. You need to go back and relook at it. And that's how we came up with Calendar Girls. Because Calendar Girls is a very large female cast, broad range of ages. So you have age 21 to 71, which is wonderful. It's wonderful to see a nice broad range of women on stage. And there are men, there's five men in the cast as well, and they have different ages as well. So it worked out to be a really good show, and it was also a comedy. And we like opening our seasons with comedies because when you're in February, the last thing you want to do is to see Long Day's Journey into Night. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's already dark and dreary yeah, enough. It's dark at 3 o'clock. <laughs> you know, you right. don't want to be living three hours of right. somebody's heroin addiction. <laughs> so what we said was we really wanted to open the season with a comedy. And so it was great to have Calendar Girls be the anchor for the season. So right. that's how we come up with the season. And we do it, we do it via committee. Uh, and it's a daunting task. It's a very difficult thing to do. You think that it might be simple, but one of the things we ask is, and it's a, it's a committee of five people, so you have five different opinions. Mm -hmm. And you also have to run the risk of, are you picking the show because you like it? 
Are you saying no to a show because you don't like it? Right. You have to put that aside and think of how does it work for LTM? It's not about whether you like it or you don't like it. It's will it work for LTM? There's a lot of shows out there I don't like, but I know that they would work for LTM and I know that they would be successful. So we that it's that blend that well, goes in there as well. And I'm I'm sure that you need to coordinate some something new versus something safe. Yes. So you have to Well, right. and that's how we've come up with Sons of the Prophet. And and that is a risky show for us to do. Uh, we did a show this past season called Clyburn Park. I don't know if you're aware of Clyburn Park. Um, it, it's billed as sort of a prequel to um, a prequel, sequel, an add-on to a Raisin in the Sun. Ooh. And the only reason why is that it takes place in the same house that they buy in a Raisin in the Sun. Has nothing else to do with a Raisin in the Sun. There's nothing else about it except that it's this house. So that's sort of the link. But the, the, the issue with, um, with Clyburn Park is it's about gentrification and the pros and cons of it. What happens when a neighborhood changes, and either it changes for the better or changes for the worse, and what happens within those beliefs right. and, and those issues. It was a very risky show for us to do, and our audience was not pleased. Um, it was, there was a lot of language in the show, um, and so we, we got a lot of letters. <laughs> we got a lot of letters. But at the same time, I said to the committee, we can't necessarily utilize that to run away from shows that are contemporary in nature, that have language in them. Mm. We have to work on moving our audience forward with us. Right. We know that we may lose some people, but we know that we're going to gain some people. And it also moves us forward as an organization, as an artistic group, to continue moving with the time. And so I said, let's not run away from scary subject matter. Let's not run away from something that we think we're going to get complaints on. Right. Um, we'll, you know, that's Dwayne and my responsibility to see if we can mitigate it up front and give people options and give people enough information so they can learn about it and mm -hmm. they can be educated before they come to see it um, and give them a great production right. so that they can sit back and go, oh, this wasn't as scary as I thought it was going to be, you know? And so that's, that's what our job is, to make sure that we are communicating enough with our audience and with our subscribers and with our um, key single ticket buyers to let them know, yeah, this is going to be a little scary for you, but it's going to be okay. You know, <laughs> right, it's going right. to be all right. You'll live through it. So, but... Yeah, no, that, yeah. that makes sense. Because yeah. a lot of people, if, if they know that it's going to be a provocative play... Mm -hmm. Before they're right. they're more open. Right. right. Exactly. Now, do you do you also um, promote like local playwrights, or do you have any anything like that? Yeah. yeah. So we uh, on the the current season in this past season, we didn't do any any new play works, uh, any new plays um, from local artists. Um, LTM definitely has in the past. We actually have a, a great vehicle um, called Evenings at Seven, mm -hmm. which is our uh, a free play reading series that we do. Um, we have uh, this past year we changed the model a little bit. So we did a total of six of them over the course of the year, and that's the plan for uh, 2017. So we're going to have six nights where we're uh, asking people to submit ideas um, for a play reading down in our smaller space, down in our silk room. Um, and it can be uh, a classic work um, that, that you, know, you just want to see you know, potentially done at LTM. It can be a newer work um, that you know, you, this may be a, a good tryout for it to see what audiences think of it. And it can be something from a, a, a local playwright. Um, last, uh, this past season, uh, Jacques Lamar um, did his, uh, uh, one of his newer plays. Um, did a, uh, yes, uh, Colonel Sellers. Colonel, Colonel, Colonel Sellers, Sellers. Yeah. the reanimator. Yep. <laughs> he did that um, uh, down there. Um, and so it's a great vehicle for, you know, for LTM because it allows us to see what audiences think of, of different types of works, works that may not necessarily fit on our main stage, works that you know, we think may be good on our main stage, we just want to get some audience feedback. But it's also a great vehicle for, uh, for local playwrights who want to see, A, want to hear artists, you know, actors reading their mm -hmm. scripts, which I know is hugely important, mm -hmm. uh, but also to get that audience feedback. Definitely. And because it's down in our smaller space, it's very intimate, you know, you know you're sitting out there, you know exactly <laughs> what the audience thinks of, yeah. of yeah. your work. <clears throat> we have another local playwright that does a lot of work with us. Her name is Anne P.A. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know the, the play, the uh, Front she, Street. Yeah, well, 
she used to do a lot of work in Middletown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, I've uh, heard of her. Yeah, yeah. and MPA, we've, over the years, we've done a number of her shows. And we did Front Street. We also did the world premiere of Sing, Virgie, Sing. Uh, the Remarkable Thing About Stardust, which I actually was in with Debbie Freund. Mm -hmm. um, and so she had a new, uh, a, a relatively new play that she had written that she had tried out up in Erie, um, Erie, New York, and she wanted to do it again. She wanted to have LTM do it. So we just did that. So that was part of, you know, Evenings at 7 as well. So it, it's a great, it's a, like Dwayne said, it's a great vehicle for, for people to hear plays that they might not necessarily always hear upstairs. Mm -hmm. And when I say upstairs, I mean in the main hall of Cheney Hall. Um, this past season, we did two plays that probably would never play the main stage. Um, Boys in the Band, and we did The Normal Heart. So talk about two sides of the gay coin, yeah, so to speak. Yeah. Um, but both of which received such a response from the audiences that came to see it, and the funny thing was, the response was, why isn't this upstairs? Mm. So it makes us sit back and go, see, <laughs> you know, yes. we need to relax a little bit. We need, it, it's scary to think about it, but sometimes these types of plays can move upstairs. And in past evenings at seven um, rounds that have been done mm. over the years, things like Doubt, I, I mm. Debbie Freund and I did a production of Doubt that was one night, and that moved upstairs to the main stage. Laramie Project, that was done as an Evening 7, that moved upstairs. So there have been times where we've done something during Evenings at 7, and it's moved into either the next season or the season after that into the main stage. Right, right. So it's a, it's a great way of kind of priming the audience for new things for them to, to hear from us. Yeah, so. and, and, and seeing if, there's, if it resonates yeah. enough to bring exactly. it upstairs. Yeah. So, um, and also, you know, there's... There's a lot of playwrights now, more playwrights, mm -hmm. who feel very encouraged because of the 24-hour projects oh, yeah. oh, that are going around. Yeah. Yeah. So, so let, let's say a young aspiring playwright is watching the show right mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. can, can they submit their play? Absolutely. Okay. Right now we're taking submissions for 2017. Okay, so they um, go on go to our your website. website. Yep, www.littletheaterinmanchester.org. And right at the top there's an Evening at 7 link that takes them right to the form. Um, and they fill they out the fill form. It out. Uh -huh. And they just send it in. Yeah. Oh, perfect. Yep. Okay. Yeah, and it's, it's not a first come, first serve. We're going to take all the forms that we get in and we'll start looking at them and see what actually makes sense for the six shows. This past year, we had seven submissions and only six slots. Right. We're expecting much more than six submissions, you know, and even seven submissions. So I think the decision to what's going to be in the season and what's going to be out of the season is going to be even a little bit more difficult this season. But that's what we're thrilled about. It's taken off, you know, and, and now we just need to grow the audience a little mm -hmm. bit more and, and, and it'll be a wonderful, it, it, it already is a wonderful thing. So Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Well, one, one of the things I love about Little Theater of Manchester, besides the, the building, which I love, mm -hmm. and, and the big organ in back, mm -hmm. yeah, it's yeah. got so much history. Definitely is that it's it's very in inclusive of mm. community members. Mm. Oh, absolutely. And what one of my long running themes is that it's never too late to go for your dreams. Mm, sure. And I know a, a lot of people think think of acting immediately, but there's also set design, mm. there's costumes, there's writing, there's directing. There's all the technicians that work behind the stage. Yes. I mean, we're yes. always looking for crew members. We're always looking for people to do props, to help run shows. You know, on a, on a show like Oklahoma, the, the cast did a lot of the movement of the set, but there was a lot of stuff happening behind the curtain that the audience didn't see. Mm -hmm. And there's, you know, five people scuttling around back there doing a whole bunch of stuff so that when the curtain goes up, it looks perfect. Right. So we're always looking for people to work backstage. We're lucky in in a way that we have our own scene shop downstairs in the basement. Um, and boy, what a scene shop it is! It is. It's yeah. It's, it's, it's a it's a very professional scene shop with a paint area and stuff. And we have this crew that we call the Wednesday Morning Crew, and it's a bunch of retired guys and women that work every Wednesday and Saturday, and that's how we get our sets done. You know, whereas other community theaters are, you know, having building parties on Saturdays or, you know, there's two husbands of two cast members that are putting the set up sure. in their garage and then transporting yeah. it over. We're kind of spoiled in the fact that we've got this, but we're always looking for people to join that as well because we need to keep feeding it. We need to keep 
feeding the monster. You well, know what I mean? Yeah. Well, and also, in, as far as the monster, I, there's also um, a, a safe haven Absolutely. component, mm -hmm. which is so important now. And it's camaraderie. And, and it yeah. builds. It's interesting that you were, use the word community because in one of the things that Dwayne and I looked at when we were looking at the season to now, okay, here's the season, here's the order, where's the through line? Where's the marketing mm -hmm. through line of it? And what came out of it was family. That if you look at all five of these shows in a certain way, even the 39 steps, it's about building a, a family or building a community or building a group of people that come together for a, a specific reason or a specific cause. And, and a lot of times that's family. Family comes together for a reason. And a lot of that is seen in Calendar Girls and Sons of the Prophet and Adam's family. And then there's the building of community, which happens with um, Godspell and the 39 Steps. And, you know, Godspell is a great, a great example of, of building that community, bringing people together under one common reason and watching what can happen. You know, obviously it's based on, you know, the Gospel of Matthew and it's a quote religious show. Um, I, I hazard to say that because people then think that they're coming to see something biblical, and it's not. Um, there's a lot of fun. There's a lot of improvisation. There's a lot of music. There's a lot of I love the music, enjoyment. Um, but it truly is about community. And so when you said it's a you know with Little Theater Manchester, it's a community. I have always said I want to bring the community back to community theater. You know because sometimes we lose sight of that. We, yes. We, we see ourselves getting very serious and taking ourselves very seriously, oh, yes. and we, we present <laughs> art, and, and you know we have to present art. Come on, guys. <laughs> you know, at the end of the day, we're not curing cancer; we're entertaining people, and we're entertaining ourselves. You know, yes. let's remember that, and and remember that we need to do it well. We need to give people their money's worth because people don't have twenty nine dollars just to throw away anymore. Um, so when I see people sitting in those seats, and I stand in the back of the theater. And I watch when the curtain goes up, and then I watch when the curtain goes down. And if I'm not seeing smiles on people's faces, or if it's not a show where they should be smiling, if I'm not seeing conversation happening, because now they're, they're processing, I get worried. I'm like, okay, did we give them their money's worth? Yeah, did we do what you, we needed to do? Exactly. You, you'd have to feel like you need to, to reassess something. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Right. So. And it's just... And I can't stress that enough now, because with the with, with the climate and the the polarization of different people, sure. this is really brings people together. Yeah, yeah. so important. Absolutely. So now, where where were you before, Dwayne? Yeah. Uh, before you came here? So um, I uh, was at the Bushnell uh, for about uh, six years, um, and then I was at Hartford Stage uh, for about eight years. Um, uh, before, and then I did a year of consulting um, down in, a, in, a, in Fairfield um, County. Um, so yeah, but I've been in, in theater, um, you know, working in, in theater uh, ever since we moved here from Texas. Uh, oh, from Texas 14 now. years ago, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, and did you, did, did you grow up like in the theater or what made you? I did, I did. So it's, um, uh, I remember my very first uh, theatrical production. I was uh, in, in fifth grade in elementary <laughs> school. My dad took us to see uh, Dracula at, uh, oh. uh, at um, <laughs> at the Playhouse there in, in Texas. And, uh, and I was hooked from that moment. Mm. And there, there's a moment at the end where Dracula sinks into the ground. And I just remember being completely blown away by the magic of that, the fact that they were able to do that. And uh, that was it, I was hooked. And wow. so I got my undergrad in theater and, and I've been working in theater since. Well, you, you've been doing such a great job at Little Theater Magic. Oh, thank you. It's, it's... I, I have um, several yeah. actor friends who have mm. worked you know, in, the, in the past 18 months. And they, they said it's a very nurturing, supportive, positive environment, it which is, is so important. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, that's the thing. I mean, it was so welcoming. Like, you know, 18 months I've, I've been there, but from day one, I mean, it just was a completely a welcoming uh, right. place. Everyone's there because they're passionate about little theater or passionate about theater in general. They want to be there. And, and that, that, that mood and that tone sort of envelops anything, everything there. Mm -hmm. And so everyone who comes in, we, we work very hard to make sure they feel welcome, not only from the, the um, uh, actor or, or technician side, but also from the front of house side. Yeah. Right. We want all of our patrons to come in and feel like it's a welcoming place and that they belong, uh, they right. belong there. And you right. know, when you look at it, Dwayne, aside from our maintenance person and um, an, mm -hmm. an admin person, Dwayne is the only full-time paid staff member that we have. Everyone else, so everybody from 
the moment they walk through the doors mm -hmm. to they're seeing a show on stage and then they're leaving, it's all volunteers. It's all, or it's a labor of love. It's a it labor of love. It yeah, truly is. is. And, and that's what I've always loved. I, I've worked with various other theaters in the past and there's one thing I always tell this story, and Debbie gets mad at me for telling it. But well, she's not here. She's not here, so I don't care. Um, but when I first walked in there 25 years ago, I was going to audition for Lion in Winter. And they had just moved into Cheney Hall. It was about to be their first full season in Cheney Hall. They were opening with Lion in Winter. And I walked in for, I opened the big oak door. And who was standing in the lobby but Debbie Freund. And she said, hi, I'm Debbie. Welcome to M LTM. Let me give you a tour. I'm like, I'm here to audition. I I'm not here to <laughs> right. tour. And she's like, that's okay. You need to see the place. And she took me on a tour. And it was immediately bringing you into the family. Yes. Immediately greeting you. So that's what we try to do with auditions when, when casts first come together. Um, I'm either there or Debbie's there as the Associate Artistic Director or the membership chair is there to greet the cast and say, thank you. You know, yes. thank you for coming to us. And, you know, we love it if this became your family. We understand that you're going to go other places, but you know you always have a home here. You know, yeah. always come back. I love that um, story because I got a tour from Deb too. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's what happens. And, and, and she it's is just, perfect yeah, for doing yeah, that. Yeah, definitely. And She's it really so warm is. and lovely. Yeah, and it really is. And and you look at everybody that that walks through the doors and everybody that's working on the shows. And even if you're in a grumpy mood that day and and you come in, something kind of happens to you once you're there. Right. And you get out of it. It, it just kind of breaks you out of it. And like, okay, well, let's do this. Let let's let's. Let's do a show and, yeah, and let's have yeah. some fun. So. And and that's why I'm 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 telling you viewers, if when you go see this theater, it's beautiful. It's got a mix of modern but but yet mm -hmm. some some old old style like mm -hmm. like yeah. you you feel the the life that's there. Yeah, yeah. definitely. It's wonderful. Yeah. So um we, we only have a couple minutes left. <laughs> um again, tell us what the season is. So we open with Calendar Girls. Uh, in April we have Godspell. In June, we have Sons of the Prophet. August is the 39 Steps, and we end with the Adams Family. And they, they can also go online. Yep, you can. Uh, we have subscriptions on sale right now, which you can do online as well, or single tickets, um, www.littletheaterofmanchester. It's an R-E. R-E, or E-R works. Both, oh, of, them, both okay. of them get you there. Okay. Uh, .org, littletheaterofmanchester.org. Wonderful. And, um, and if they want to volunteer, they can find it on the website. Um, absolutely. And you have... Open auditions. You open don't auditions. Pre no, no we pre never precast. Ever, ever, no. ever. We do not precast. Our next Perfect. auditions are Godspell, which are? Which are December 12th and 13th. Uh, and we just auditioned Calendar Girls, so Godspell, yes, is coming up December 12th and 13th. And those audition notices are going to be on the going website. Going out tonight, yeah. Tonight. I awesome. believe. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, wonderful. Well, I'm so glad I finally got Little Theater of Manchester back. Yeah, We're no, glad to be here. So yeah. yeah. This is great. It's a, a, a great show. I'm I'm very excited to, to see your place, um, to to star in a play. Please. <laughs> Come on, Bishop. No, but, no but, I'm, but I'm I'm thrilled to have you guys on. Great. And Thanks congratulations on your new position. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations on coming back. Thank you. All thank right. you very much. Okay, thanks for tuning in. I will see you at LTM. Little Theater Manchester.